Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to update the Lilo boot sector uh, to match the one that's installed with Linux from Scratch version 4. So if I mount the boot and uh, if I find fact show you the configuration file which if you remember we installed this configuration file in Linux from Scratch 1.0 and then copied it across onto Linux from Scratch 4.0 which is what you can see now but we didn't run Lilo minus V in Linux from Scratch 4 we did that in Linux from Scratch 1 but if I now run this in Linux from Scratch 4 you can see that it's refusing to do any updates because it's detected that the current boot code um, in the first sector of the disk is version 20.0 and we're trying to insert or do an update with version 22.2 .2. so if I do Lilo minus V you can see that the current version is indeed 22.2 .2. so the updates not being done now when um, Lilo is installed it actually but looks with default by default copies files into the boot partition automatically and because um didn't have the boot partition sorry not the boot partition is a boot directory automatically because it didn't have the boot partition mounted you can see these files here which are dated 26th of march if i mount boot again and do a listing of boot you'll see the equivalent of these um programs as far as you can match them up for example boot b these are older versions these are the versions from SUS uh, 6.1 which is dated um, around about may 1999 uh, for example that one there os2 db so what we've got to do is to try and merge these files into the um, current um, boot partition so the best way to do that is to firstly take a backup of um, the boot partition as it is so i'm going to um, make a boot directory change into it and i'm going to copy um, from the boot partition so this is the one with all the new updates this is the actual boot partition copy all those files into this backup directory i'll put a minus v so we can see what gets done you'll notice it hasn't copied lost and found because it's a directory that's okay there are no other directories so that's not a problem now i'm going to unmount the boot partition and i'm going to mount it at uh, mount so slash dev slash hda2 mount it at mount so what we've got now is at boot we've got the newer lilo 22.2 .2 files that were installed when it was initially built and installed and in mount we've got the current existing um, files that are used to boot any of the operating systems that are on the machine and finally in the home directory of root in the boot directory we've got a copy of those files as well in case uh, anything goes wrong so what i'm now going to do is to copy these updated files into the boot sector uh, sorry into the boot partition which is a mnt uh, which means that any existing file names get overwritten and any new files which are obviously required um, just get inserted into um, the boot partition so I'm going to copy from boot all the files there and copy them into the current directory which is mount and if you recall that contains the current part, uh, boot partition the live boot partition if you like so again I'll put a minus V there so we can see what's being done there they are they've copied so if I now do a listing you can see we've got, for example, that OS2DB has been updated to March 27th, um, as have all these other files. 
and you can see there's the system map and the kernel from uh, when we built the kernel for this LFS version 4 earlier on. So now I want to go back to the root home directory, unmount, mount, and I want to now mount boot again. So when I now look at boot, you can see those files are there as they would be normally. If I do Lilo help, you can see there's an option here to install a master boot record and it uses these files to install the code into the disk. So I'm going to do Lilo minus V minus M. We want to install it on HDA because that's our boot disk. And you can see now it says it's been updated. And now all I need to do is do Lilo minus V to update the um, menu, if you like, for Lilo. And you can see that it's actually worked this time. It's added all those images and you can see it's got a little star there saying that's going to be the default. So the only thing left to do now is to reboot and test this. Um, let's come out of that. And what I'll do again is I'll shut this down and I'll boot up actually on the machine and test this. And I'll also test that I can boot into the existing SU 6.1 and the previous version of Linux Scratch 1.0 as well as obviously 4.0. So I'll shut this down now. And boot up. Um, actually on the machine. Okay, just wait for this to sync up and settle down properly. Just wait while the machine... Yep, there it goes. Hopefully we'll see a Lilo menu in a minute. And there we go. So you can see we've got a um, uh, an actual like graphical menu, if you like, text textual graphical menu, as opposed to the black and white um, prompts we had before. And you can see it's default to LFS 4.0. So I've, I've just stopped the timeout just so I can look at that while I'm talking. And we've got arrows we can select which one we want. So I'll take the default first of all, just make sure we can still boot into LFS 4.0, because that's what we're working on. And yes, it does look like it's all working okay. And once again, there's no errors on all the servers that are being started up. Well, at least the Telnet and the um, SSH server. I'll log in, make sure I can get in, and maybe recall that links command that I did to test, make sure we can reach the Server, yep, that's still there, so that's still working fine. So that's all good. I'm now going to test uh, SU 6.1 and Linux from scratch 1.0, make sure they're accessible, which they should be because all we've done is updated the boot code. Well, I say all we've done, updates the boot code, but the, there's no harm in trying it to make sure they still work. So once again, just got to bear with this syncing up and looking a bit strange. There's numbers half cut off the screen and so on. Okay, so let's do SU 6.1 next. And yep, that's booting fine. See if the kernel can get in towards init. Yes, it has. So that's all good.
Yeah, that's okay. I'll just log in to check that works okay. Yep, that's fine. I'll come out, reboot, and check that I can get into Linux and Scratch 1.0 still. Okay, then it's scratch one. Yep, the kernel's loaded and it's passed control to init. And there's the login. So once again, just check I can log in and it's fine. So that's the end of uh, building Linux from scratch 4.0 on Linux and Scratch 1.0 using Linux and Scratch 1.0 as a host. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the videos and they've been useful. If you've been following along, I hope it was successful for you as it was for me. Um, as I said, I will be making the packages and patches available uh, in a similar way to what I did for Linux and Scratch 1.0 um, in case you want to actually have a go at doing it. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this sort of stuff um, and other tech related stuff um, and give me a thumbs up on the videos if you've enjoyed watching them thanks very much goodbye